Hi guys, you're welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kamu Awesome. If you are new to this things, kindly subscribe, like the videos, and turn on your notification bell so that you'll be notified of subsequent content I'll be dropping right on this channel. So this particular video is a highly requested video and I promise to release it as soon as possible because of its urgency. So this video is how to study anatomy effectively with anatomy atlas. Okay, so the major atlas we are going to be using is the Frank Litter's Atlas of Human Anatomy. So this is a very, very popular anatomy atlas across the major and most medical schools in Nigeria and beyond. Of course, there are other atlases, but this is highly recommended for students. There are other atlases that have um, cadaveric images and so many other atlas like the Grand's atlas and the rest of them but they are all beautiful but for the sake of this particular video i'll be using frank Netta's atlas of human anatomy okay i'll make some reviews of atlases later on in my subsequent videos so guys in this video we are going to be looking at how to use your atlas to study um, a particular topic in human anatomy so if you want to study any topic in gross anatomy specifically you should always go alongside with your atlas alongside with your textbook your class notes and other lecture materials that will be relevant for your studies at the top of the paper okay, guys, so i'll be demonstrating the usage of atlas using some um specified topics for easy understanding all right so um for the opening topic i'll be using to um demonstrate the usage of atlas is the muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm yes so we'll be relating what we'll be studying to the atlas to see if it will be making sense to us okay so i'll be using bd cherusia as the textbook right this bd cherusia and then this is my atlas so whatever thing we read here we try to relate it to the atlas and see if we can understand it all right now remember i told you uh, in my review of textbook there are some shortcomings of this that's why um it seems like some other textbook has much more information than the other now in the attachment of the of course you know that the muscles of the um, anterior compartment are eight in number five superficial and three deep so we'll start with the superficial muscles which are five in number so the first one we have is pronator teres Okay. Now, according to P.D. Cherusia, it says that the origin is medial epicondyl of the humerus. Well, it didn't specify that pronator teres has two heads. It has the humeral head and it has the ulnar head. You can see one of the limitations of the textbook, right? So, actually, now pronator teres has two heads, ulnar head and humeral head. But it didn't tell us it has two heads. But here, it told us that flexor digitorum superficialis has a humeral ulnar head and a radial head. You can see, but it didn't specify that of pronator teres. Now, some other textbooks or authorities believe that pronator teres actually originates from the medial supracondylar ridge, thereby forming the medial boundary of the cubital fossa. But then, BD Cherusia is telling us that the origin is from the medial epicondyl of humerus. Hmm. And then the insertion is at the middle of the lateral aspect of shaft of radius. So we've read this statement, so we are going to our atlas to see if it will be making sense to us. Okay, so this is our pronator teres, this muscle we are seeing here. Okay, you can see it has two heads, clearly indicated in the atlas. Pronator teres muscle, ulna and humeral head. So this is the humeral head, you can see. And it is in this atlas, it is shown that it's actually coming from the what medial supracondylar ridge. This is the supracondylar ridge, and this is the medial epicondyle. So this sharp edge is our medial epicondyle, right? Well, there is no much difference if you say medial epicondyle, if you say medial supracondylar ridge, it's still okay. So that is for the humeral head. Then the ulnar head, you can see it also picked origin from the ulnar bone. The ulnar head is coming from the coronoid process of the ulna. And so the two head fused to form this single pronator teres nozzle. So, and then from our textbook, they told us that, okay, we have seen the origin here. And then it said that the insertion is at the middle of the lateral aspect of shaft of radius. Okay, so this is our radius, right? 
and then they said middle. You can see the insertion is more like at the middle between this between here and here. Okay, it's like it is inserting at the middle, at the midline of the bone. Now, and they said it is at the lateral aspect. So here is medial. This is the medial aspect of the bone, and this is the lateral aspect of the bone. So it is the whole statement is now, you know, shown diagrammatically here. So all this statement that we read here has been shown here. So this is the origin from the uh, medial epicondyle, or like I told you, from the medial supracondylar range, depending on authority. And then the other ulna head from the coronal process of the ulna, and then the inserts at the words the middle of what the lateral aspect of the shaft of the radius this is the shaft of the radius between the ends of the radius we have the shaft right and you can see the middle and then you can see it is actually at the lateral what side or the lateral aspect of the shaft of the word radius so with this you need to really cram the origin on insertion of coronator terrains i doubt if you would the next one is flexocarpi radialis, origin, medial epicondyle of humerus, and then insertion, basis of second and third metacarpal bone, all right, second and third metacarpal bone. So how are we going to relate this now? We go back to our atlas, we are looking at flexocarpi radialis, okay? So this is our flexocarpi radialis, you locate it, and then this is the flexocarpi radialis, you can see it's a fusiform muscle. Now, they told us that it picked origin from the medial epicondyle. This is a common flexor origin, right? And then, the tendon is inserted at the basis of second... This is the second metacarpal. You can see I have related it to this atlas. And the base of the third metacarpal. So this base, this is the head. Here is the head of the metacarpals. And this is the base. So from our textbook, we saw that the insertion is at the base of second and third metacarpal bone. So guys, we have seen how that statement has been translated into a picture that we can actually have in our mind, right? About the origin of flexocarpi radialis from the medial epicondyle and its insertion at the base of the second and third metacarpal. Of course, you know that the thumb is the, this is the, the, the first metacarpal. This is the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So it's at the second, and then you can see the third. You can see the statement. The next one is palmaris longus, also from the medial epicondyle of the humerus, and it's insertion at the flexor retinaculum and palmar apineurysis. Now, you go back to your atlas. You can see your palma, palmaris longus, you can see it also picked origin from the common flexor tendon, like by the common flexor tendon from the medial epicondyle, and that is it here. So you've seen the origin being the medial epicondyle, and its insertion at what? They told us flexor retinaculum and then the word palma apineurysis. Well, you can see what I told you that is not everything that actually can be related to your words atlas. Now, they showed us palma apineurysis here, and you can see the tendon actually blended with palma apineurysis of the palm. You can see here. But then there is this ligament that transverses the carpal bone, converting it into a tunnel called carpa tunnel, and that ligament is called the what? The flexor retinaculum, also known as the what? Transverse carpal ligament. But it is not shown here. So, but then they told us that this. Um, Palmaris longus also inserted there, but it isn't shown in the atlas. So what do you now do? You have to browse it and you go to your Google and type insertion of Palmaris longus on the flexor retinaculum. I'll browse it and I'll put the picture right in this video so that you understand what I'm saying. So that's why I told you it's not everything that actually can be related to your atlas. So you have to keep your internet handy when you are studying your human anatomy. So we move to the next one, flexor digitorum superficialis. Okay, that's the next one we are going to look at. So they told us that the origin of flexor digitorum superficialis is still at the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Now, mind you, that flexor digitorum superficialis has two heads: humeral ulnar head and the radial head. 
Now, they told us that the Himeru honor had originated from the word median epicondyle of Himerus and then the medial border of coronoid process of ulna. And then the radial head is looking, um, originating from the anterior oblique line of the shaft of radius. Calm down. Let us go to the atlas and see if this will make sense to us. All right. So back to our atlas. This is our flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. So, so guys, back to what we were saying about the um, humeral ulnar head or flexor digitorum superficialis. You can see from the atlas, they told us that the humeral ulnar head originates from two places, but it's just one single head, just an extension. So one originated from the median epicondyle by the common flexor origin, right? And the other one is coming from the coronary process of the ulna. So you can see it from here. Okay, that's one head. And then they also told us from the textbook that it also has a radial head that originated from the anterior oblique line of the shaft of the radius. Now, this is the radius, right? Then we have the anterior oblique line. There is an oblique line here, but we have to go to study the bone itself in order to find it. So there is an anterior oblique line that runs obliquely in the anterior surface of the radius here. And then you can see this head also coming from here. So this white portion is the head. So we have our humeral ulnar head and our radial head forming from the anterior oblique line of the word radius. You can see. Then they joined to form this large muscle called the flexor digitorum word superficialis. Then what did they tell us about the insertion? So they told us that the insertion is that the muscle divides into four tendons. So you go to your atlas and look at it. You now see, wow, it divides into four tendons. One, two, three, four. Mind you, this one is different though. This one is from flexor pollicis longus muscle. So we are not studying this one now. So, we saw how this one divided into four tendons, and it was made in this statement, most divides into four tendons, and we have seen it in our atlas. Continuation, each tendon divides into two slips. Pause, calm down, go back to your atlas. Each of them will divide into two slips. You can see, each of these tendons that was divided, still further divided into two slips. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. And then what did they say? And these two slips are inserted on the sides of the middle phalanx of the second to the fifth digits. And those two slips that was divided are inserted on the sides of the middle phalanx of the second to the fifth digits. You go back to your atlas. Now, look at. These are the digits, right? So we have our kappa bones here. Eh? We have our metacarpals here, which are these longer bones. Then we have our phalanges, also called digits. So the phalanges is divided into, we have the proximal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the distal phalanx. You can see the junctions here. And then they told us that these two slips are inserted specifically at the middle phalanx, the sides. Remember they are two, so they will be attaching at the sides, or you will say the lateral sides. Of the middle phalanx of the what second to the fifth digit of phalanges so this is the second this is the first the thumb is the first so this is our second third fourth and fifth digit so you can look at it we have related that statement now to our atlas so these are mind you that there is another tendon that crosses this thing though this tendon is different and it's the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus you can see it's even made clearer here let me show you guys. When you, this one now is the cut tendon of flexor digitorum bones superficialis. So in between those two slips, another tendon pierces it and cross, and that's flexor digitorum profundus, and that's not what we are talking about. So you just put eye on that particular one that we are studying. When you when you get flexor digitorum profundus, you will come back and relate it to it. But for now, we are specifically talking about our flexor digitorum superficialis and that is here and here 
you can see so we've related it to this so lastly on how to use this atlas in relating to what you're going to study now we have flex or kapai or naris it's two hearts two heads humera head and honor head so the humera head is coming from the medial epicondyle of the humerus okay that's for flexor capi onaris so we we'll come back to our atlas this is flexor capi onaris muscle you can see it's labeled flexor capi onaris muscle right it has a common flexor origin from the words um medial epicondyle of the humerus that's the humera head then for the ulnar head is also coming from the words medial aspect of olecranon process that means it also picked origin from the back of the um humerus of the um yes owner rather we have the lecranon process of the owner so something like this the lecranon process of the owner but is not really demonstrated here so you have to go and um look for it online yes but then our textbook told us that it also picked the region from the medial aspect of the lacrimal process and the posterior border of the ulna. But in this atlas, it was only shown coming from the medial epicondyle by the common flex or tendon. Then the insertion said that it inserts at the pisiform bone. So you trace the insertion, go back to your atlas, go through it. You can see the pisiform bone. So it's inserted at the pisiform bone. So you can see this particular insertion here they say that the insertion is prolonged to the hook of the hamate at the base of the fifth metacarpal bone so apart from the pisiform bone which we saw here the insertion also extended to the hook of hamate so this is our hamate here you can see hook of hamate so the insertion also extended to the hook of hamate and the base of the fifth metacarpal so this is the fifth metacarpal so we have related the statements here. So, so far so good. We have used the attachment of the superficial muscles of the forearm and used and related it to our atlas. So, when you study, you do these relations and then it will help you to understand better. And you don't need to cram it. So, when you understand it in the atlas, you can be able to form your mental picture in your head. Whenever someone asks you the question, you should be able to form the mental picture in your head because you have actually seen how this origin, insertion, and all what not came about. Okay? So guys, so far so good. I've been able to demonstrate how to you know, relate what you are studying in your gross anatomy to your atlas using the superficial forearm muscle. I would have just gone to teaching you other things, but this is not a tutorial video. I mean, I'm not teaching you guys gross anatomy. I'm just trying to basically tell you how you can translate the wordings of the textbook into the pictures in your atlas so as to understand effectively and that is how to study atlas and remember anything you study and then it is not in the atlas you search for it like okay we've seen that we didn't see the insertion of um the palmaris longus on the flexor retinal column but it is one of the insertions before it extended for that to insert at the palma apiduroses but then you didn't see it in the atlas i'm going to just be like okay just throw it away no you have to go online google it look for it and see how the insertion blended with the flexor retinal column it passes above the flexor retinal column and while it passes above the flexor retinal column it's attached there okay before it blended with the palmaris um the palmar apinuresis which is like a modified tube fascia of the palm yes so guys please and please kindly like this video subscribe turn on your notification bell because i'll be dropping subsequent videos on this channel and anything you want me to make as regards to medical school you can always whatsapp me i'll be dropping my um whatsapp line on this on the description the video description so you can always message me anytime and tell me anything at all you want me to do any video or we can also interact so guys see you in my next video bye